Hey, when it comes to fantasy football running back rankings, it's really easy to put together the top 10 list. A little bit more challenging for a top 25. But you know how we do it over here. It's headliner style. We're going deep into the top 36 running backs for 2019. What's going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully, you guys are all doing well out there. Welcome back to the Draft.com studios, where today we're talking about rankings. Fantasy football running back rankings, but we're not doing the basic, easy, you know, cookie-cutter top 10 list. Nope. We're going deeper. Way deeper. We're going top 36 running backs here for 2019. Try to get you guys into that RB3 territory. Before we dive into the list, just a couple quick housekeeping things. First of all, please hit that like button for us. It really helps us out here on YouTube. And like every other video, if we can get over a 1,000 likes on a video, I'm giving away a couple free draft guides, two free draft guides for any video here that goes over 1,000 likes. So make sure hit that like button. Also, we had a video about two weeks ago, a must-own running back video with Kyle. And he said, hey, if I get over those 1,000 likes, not only are we going to give away the draft guides, but we're also going to announce our next autographed jersey. Well, it happened here over the weekend, so we're going to be announcing it soon. There's a few hanging over my shoulder right here. They could be the ones we're giving away, so make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're going to be announcing those details very soon this week, and you do not want to miss it. Lastly, head over to our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. Our draft guide is available for, for order there, and people are absolutely loving it. They are flying off the virtual shelves, I guess you could say. If you haven't caught the preview for it real quick, here's a quick little teaser just to wet the palate. I mean, the thing is going to be awesome. It's almost 500 pages of straight fantasy football fire. You don't want to miss out on it. Go check it out and get yours today. But now, before wasting any more time, let's get into the top 36 running back rankings for fantasy football here in 2019. All right, here we go, kicking off our rankings. And you know what? We're starting off at number one. Why? Because a lot of people already know who the top 10 running backs are. So it's really not going to be a surprise to build any anticipation. The names you guys are really looking for are going to be a little bit deeper. And I understand that. So now we're going to build the anticipation going backwards. So kicking it off, number one. No surprise. For me, it's Ezekiel Elliott. I said this in my overall rankings video. He's actually my number one overall player here for this year. That offensive line, the, the offense in general, should be, take a big step forward with Amari Cooper and Dak Prescott. They have a lot more weapons, and that healthy offensive line really gives him that extra little nudge just to inch him by Saquon Barkley. Barkley being number two. Really have nothing bad to say about Barkley. I think that offense in general is not going to be up to the same level as the Cowboys, which I'm sure the Giants fans hate to hear. Saquon Barkley is going to get a ton of volume. I think Zeke Elliott's just a little bit safer. And at the number one pick, that's what I'm looking for is the safest, best option. Number three, Christian McCaffrey. Now, these are all half-point PPR rankings, which really isn't going to change a whole, whole lot for full-point PPR. They may have some slight differences for standard, but not by much. If anything, some of these heavy pass-catching backs may drop, you know, a slot or two. McCaffrey, though, is going to see a lot of volume. Yes, he could see some slight regression in the passing numbers with the, the step forwards, possibly of a DJ Moore. We have, uh, you know, Chris Hogan in town right now, which nobody really seems to care about. Curtis Samuel could take a step forward. Does Greg Olson come back and have a renaissance career at the end of his, you know, football life? There's a lot of other options there, so he could regress slightly in the pass-catching numbers, but he's still going to see the volume to be one of the top running backs in all of football. For Alvin Kamara, I absolutely love Alvin Kamara, and I would actually argue for him to maybe be number one or two on this list if it wasn't for Latavius Murray. Now that Mark Ingram is gone, that really was going to help Alvin Kamara get that volume because he's so efficient. Now, with Murray in town, Kamara's going to have basically the same role, finish right there in the top five once again. Still a solid pick, but he's coming in at number four. Number five is Melvin Gordon. And yes, I know everybody is freaking out about Melvin Gordon and what he said this past weekend, but however, He's still on the Los Angeles Chargers. I really don't see a scenario where the Chargers don't pay him. Why would they not want to pay him? He's not only just one of the best running backs in football. We went through this last year with Le'Veon Bell. He already laid the groundwork. Melvin Gordon is on video recorded talking to his father saying that, you know, he would do the same thing if he were Le'Veon Bell. Well, you know what? 
Here it is. It's coming up. I don't think the Chargers just want to lose him. I can see him getting signed here shortly for a huge contract. I expect Melvin Gordon to be on the Chargers still here for 2019, and he's my number five running back as of right now. Now, it is still early July. Anything changes, these rankings will adjust, but we'll play with it, you know, when, when that time comes. Number six, David Johnson, and he's a little bit higher for some people. The overall consensus right now has him at number five. I have him at six. Still a very, very good option. I love the air raid offense that Cliff Kingsbury is going to bring to Arizona. But David Johnson still has a little bit of risk for me. A little bit more risk than the top five names right now on this list. I think the upside is there. We've seen it before. He's produced huge numbers before. We saw his floor last year, and he was still a top 10 running back in fantasy football. So I think he has a very good year. I have him at uh, running back six. Number seven, here we go. All about that Chubb life. Love some Nick Chubb still. My number seven running back. Consensus-wise, he's number 12. So I have him a little bit higher. A lot of people are still terrified of Kareem Hunt. I am not. Why? We're talking about 10 weeks into the season before we see Hunt, and there's no guarantee that he's even on the roster by that point. Who knows what can happen from now until then. Nick Chubb is an elite running back in an elite offense with a great, great opportunity. Love some Nick Chubb. Number eight, Joe Mixon. And I have him basically where everybody else has him, right there at number eight uh, as far as running backs. And the part that really worries me is why did they go out and draft, you know, the Travion Williams and the Rodney Andersons when they still have Gio Bernard? Are they not going to commit to Joe Mixon? Because if Joe Mixon can go out there and get close to 250 touches, the guy is going to be a hands-down RB1, no doubt. No question about it. Still like Joe Mixon a lot. I just have a few question marks if they're really going to give him the volume that we're expecting him to get. Number nine, James Conner. James Conner may be up in that top five or six range if it wasn't for Jalen Samuels. I still like James Conner this year. I do. I have him as my running back nine. The consensus has him as their running back nine. A, a lot of people are thinking, man, why are you so down on Conner? I'm not. I'm just limiting expectations slightly because Jalen Samuels will be involved in some capacity in that backfield. It could limit some of the pass-catching upside that we've seen from James Conner here in the past. Uh, number 10, Le'Veon Bell. So consensus-wise has him at number 7. I'm not quite as high as him. I got him back at number 10. Hey, the beginning of his schedule is absolutely brutal. There's a lot of unknowns in the New York Jets offense. Does Sam Darnold take the step forward that a lot of people expect to help pull some of those defenders out of the box from Le'Veon Bell? He's running behind an inferior offensive line from what he's used to in Pittsburgh. A lot of question marks. I have him a little bit lower. Number 11, Dalvin Cook. I have him basically right where the consensus has him also, right there at number 11. I like Dalvin Cook a lot. I went into in-depth you know, detail of Dalvin Cook in a previous video as a, as a, a possible must-own candidate here for 2019. I really broke him down in-depth, so if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you go check it out on our channel. Number 12, Damian Williams sneaks into my top 12 running backs. Now, consensus has him at 13, so I'm one spot higher on him. And here's my thing with Damian Williams. I think he is easily in any PPR league an RB1 if he can stay healthy the entire year. And I hate to put that on somebody who really hasn't struggled with a whole lot of injuries in his career. He just hasn't had this type of volume yet. So if he can sustain the volume, the production is going to be there. Any running back in this system is going to produce huge numbers. Damian Williams is very, very intriguing. However, if you do take Damian Williams, I would also be saying, hey, towards the end of your drafts, one of the last picks, you need to go look at Darwin Thompson because that's somebody who is very, very intriguing if anything were to happen to Damian Williams. But right now, my running back 12. Number 13, here's Todd Gurley. Had to put him right outside the top 12. He's still a little bit unknown. I'm still not for sure on Todd Gurley. Is a lot of this some media hype saying how you know limited he's going to be? Is Daryl Henderson really not as much of a thing as we think he is? Are people just totally forgetting about Malcolm Brown? There's a lot of question marks in this backfield, and Todd Gurley may move up or down depending on how the news comes out in the next few weeks. We want to see him get into training camp. How involved is he? Is he you know, standing on the sidelines? Is he involved in drills? That's what we need to see here over the next few weeks before we really make our determination on Todd Gurley. But for right now, I have my reservations. I have him at number 13. Number 14, Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers, another guy who I went very, very, very much in depth in in a previous video as another must-have running back. 
if this guy can get the volume, if we can get him about 15 touches a game, the guy's efficiency is off the charts and could return huge, huge value. Right now, the consensus has him as number 15. I have him at 14, one spot higher, but I do think the potential for Aaron Jones is there that if he can get that work vo- that workflow, that volume in that backfield of the Green Bay Packers, he's going to have a huge year, and a lot of people will, ha- will have huge dividends paid to them if they get Aaron Jones in their draft. Number 15, Devontae Freeman. Now, this guy is somebody who everybody is absolutely terrified of, but look at it. I mean, the consensus-wise has him at 17. I have him at 15. It's not like I'm out here saying Devontae Freeman is going to be a number one running back. What I'm saying is on draft day, his value is still there. Now, his ADP is starting to climb. I think people are starting to realize it. But Devontae Freeman, as your running back two in 2019, could be huge for you if he comes out and can stay healthy. And even if he isn't there for all 16 games, you got him as your running back two. The risk is a little bit lower than if you're depending on him to be your running back one. Number 16 is going to be Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts, right where the consensus has him also. A lot of people, I I really don't understand with Marlon Mack. They always bring up the injury concerns of Devontae Freeman, but they don't bring up the injury concerns of Marlon Mack. It's almost like he's getting a pass for all of his past injuries, which I don't understand. Now, he is in one of the most high-powered offenses in football with the Colts. He's going to get an opportunity. The the risk for injury is there just like it is for a lot of these other guys. It's kind of why he's going to be your running back two and not your running back one. If he had no associated risks, he would be you know a borderline first, second round pick. It's why he's a little bit later. The risk is there. I have him at number 16. Number 17, Derrick Henry. And yes, I understand this is still half point PPR rankings, but Derrick Henry could still see enough volume this year to really be sufficient in any type of format. I don't care if it's full point PPR. I don't have him quite as high as some. Uh, I've seen him all the way up into the top 12 of some people's rankings. Consensus has him at 19. I'm right here at 17. I don't hate Derrick Henry at all. I do have my reservations, but the potential is there in an offense that's going to have to lean on the run. Why? Their passing game sucks with Marcus Mariota. Uh, What's really going to happen in Tennessee is kind of a little bit of a question mark, but Derrick Henry, if he can build off the momentum at the end of 2018 into 2019, he could be a very, very pleasant running back too. Heck, he could almost be a flex for some people if you go heavy running back in the draft. Number 18 is going to be Mark Ingram. I have him six spots higher than the consensus right now, and I see it in the comment section a lot. I see people saying, aren't you worried about Gus Edwards or Justice Hill or Lamar Jackson taking away carries? And yeah, they're all going to be involved, but they signed Mark Ingram out of free agency. They brought him in to be their number one running back. He's going to see volume in one of the highest rushing volume offenses in all of football. The only thing you can do at this point for your running backs is try to find the guys who are going to get the ball the most, the most targets, the most carries, and Mark Ingram is that guy. I have him at number 18 overall. He's a solid, solid running back too, but he has that upside, and you can almost get him as your number three on draft day. Pay attention to his name. He's somebody who could see a lot of volume, and that is king in fantasy football. Number 19, Kenyon Drake. We've talked about him a lot on this show. We have him three spots higher than the consensus. There really isn't a whole lot of up, you know, people behind him to take away carries. You got Kalen Balaj. Yeah, I get it. He'll see some work, but Kenyon Drake should see the majority of the touches in this backfield, and he doesn't need to have 20, 25 touches a week to produce enough return on investment for your draft day price. Still like Kenyon Drake. Number 20, James White. Six spots higher than the consensus. The targets are there. There's like 160 targets up for grabs, and we already know what James White does best in this offense. He gets a lot of check down passes. He gets a lot of opportunities from Tom Brady. Yes, he's not going to go out there and see 200 carries, but could he see over 100 targets? It's possible again in any PPR type of format. That works out just fine. Give me James White at number 20. Number 21, Leonard Fournette. Now, Kyle broke him down in depth here you know, a, a couple days ago and really opened a lot of eyes to Leonard Fournette because the risk isn't quite there as much as it was in the past, but that's only because you're getting him at a cheaper price on draft day. I don't hate Leonard Fournette. I just don't want to depend on Leonard Fournette. And right now, I have him at 21, seven spots behind the consensus. If you can get him late enough in your drafts, he still has decent value. It's all about value. You just got to find out when it is and when you should take him. Number 22, carry on Johnson. I got him four spots lower than the consensus, and a lot of people may be seeing a little bit less of a timeshare than I am. I do think C.J. Anderson is still involved, and technically people don't forget. As of right now, Theo Riddick is still on the roster and could be involved in the passing game. There's a lot of rumors flying around that he may be out of town here, start of the season, but until he is gone, 
I can't just give all the passing work downs to carry on Johnson. It, it tempers my expectations slightly. I have him at number 22. 23, David Montgomery. To me, I have him a little bit higher. The consensus has him as 25, but I'm still worried a little bit about David Montgomery and not so much the talent. I know the talent is there, but right now, this is almost borderline screaming Royce Freeman to me. Now, he's in a much better offense than, than Royce Freeman was last year. Dave Montgomery is going to have the opportunity to be put in a great situation with a great offense and an offensive mind like Coach Matt Nagy. The potential is there, but I don't want to reach too early for it until I can actually see some of it in the NFL, you know, during NFL speed drills. This is not just, you know, college guys that are going to automatically produce I have some reservations about David Montgomery, but I still think he's a running back two here in 2019. Number 24 is going to be fellow rookie Josh Jacobs just coming off his fresh deal. He's officially a member now of the Oakland Raiders, and I got him four spots lower than the consensus. I'm just a little bit more down on Josh Jacobs. I don't think he's going to have a horrible year. I think his ADP is getting too high up into the third round for a guy who is so unproven. So before I get blown up in the comment section, I mean, I hear it from Raiders Nation out there a lot. I mean, the black hole is is relevant in the comment section. I don't hate Josh Jacobs. I don't like the price that you have to draft him at for the amount of unknowns that are actually there. That's the problem. It's not the talent with the kid. It's not even so much the situation. It's just the question marks for as early as you have to take him. I would rather take my chance with somebody who's a little bit more proven in the NFL. Uh, number 25, Philip Lindsay. And Phil Lindsay has the opportunity to really move up this list. I mean, that was a pretty substantial wrist injury that he he had there at the end of the season last year. Now, I get it. It's a wrist. It's not in one of his wheels. His feet are fine. His ankles are fine. He doesn't have any lower body you know, injuries. I get that. But it's also a right wrist, which is responsible for carrying the football. And what do we do if we see him in the preseason and he has a fumbling issue? Does Royce Freeman get more of a split, more of an opportunity? That's just something we need to pay attention to and watch here in the preseason. If Philip Lindsay comes out in camp in the first few weeks of preseason and looks 100% with no issues, he's going to move up this list. Don't worry. I'm not sleeping on him and I'm not forgetting about it. I just want to see how he produces coming off this injury. Number 26 is Sony Michel, and I have him three spots lower, and it's hard because the guy looked great at times last year, but then they drafted Damian Harris. He's already struggling with off-season injuries as Sony Michel. Does he get a little bit more of a break in 2019? Are they going to be trailing more in New England than we, what we're used to, and do we see more James White, more passing down work? It's entirely possible. Sony Michel worries me because there are other options in that backfield, and I can't see them just pushing him out there if he's dealing with little nagging injuries. We could see more Damian Harris, and if we do, Damian Harris almost becomes the better value on draft day than Sony Michel. He could still be a little bit too expensive, and until we see what his health is like start of the season, I'm not really interested too much in the higher ADP for Sony Michel. 27 is going to be Tariq Cohen, Chicago Bears. Already talked about David Montgomery, but Cohen kind of has his own solidified role in this Matt Nagy offense. He's going to be involved. Nope, he's not going to go out there and get you triple-digit carries, but he's going to be involved in the passing game. He'll get a lot of screen work, dump down passes. Heck, you may see him line up in the slot at times, put him in motion. He'll return kicks and punts. There's all different types of ways for them to get the ball in the hands of Tariq Cohen. He's going to be relevant once again. The guy surprised a lot of people last year, and it would not surprise me if he outperformed this ranking again this year. He doesn't need the volume in order to get the production. That's one of the great things about Tariq Cohen. He doesn't need 20 touches a week. He can give you a great fantasy day, maybe with only 10 touches. Number 28 is going to be Lamar Miller, and nope, he's not sexy. A whole lot of people hate him, but you know what? He's a constant producer in the offense. I have him one spot higher than the consensus at number 28. The volume will be there to start the season. Yes, Donta Foreman may take some of that away as the season progresses, but to start the season, Lamar Miller is going to have every opportunity to make this his backfield. He's still a solid play. Not exciting, not going to go out there and give you that huge ceiling, but he's got a safe floor and not somebody that I would mind having, heck, even as a flex play for where you can get him here in 2019. 29 is going to be Tevin Coleman. I did a video just a couple days ago talking about backfields to avoid, and everybody said in the comment section maybe 292,000 times, hey, you forgot the 49ers. I don't hate Tevin Coleman. If you can get him at the right price in the 7th, 8th, ninth round, I really don't hate it. Re reuniting with Kyle Shanahan in an offense that's going to put him in a position to get the ball in his hands. Look what Tevin Coleman did the last time he was with Shanahan in Atlanta. The opportunities are there. He's not solely reliant on getting touches out of the backfield. We already know that Jarek McKinnon and Matt Breida have you know, had injury issues in the past. If anything, if anybody goes down, Tevin Coleman could see a huge bump in volume, and a bump in volume in an offense like that in San Francisco 
could pay huge dividends. Don't forget, there were times last year where the name Raheem Mostert, who, yes, is still in town, but was fantasy relevant in an offense led by Kyle Shanahan. And now with Jimmy G back, that could, you know, clear out the box a little bit more, give more opportunities for the running backs in that offense. Tevin Coleman, I do not hate at all in this offense because of the price you can get him at on draft day. Number 30, Latavius Murray. And I'm going to be completely honest, right now he's trending up. This guy could literally get into the top 24 before the season starts because I really expect him to take over that Mark Ingram role in New Orleans. Is he going to go out there and be a top 10 running back? No, probably not. I think they do give a little bit more to Alvin Kamara, but Murray's going to be there to steal goal line opportunities at times. He'll be involved in non-passing downs. Latavius Murray is somebody who's constantly produced. I mean, even back into the days when he was in Oakland, then going to Minnesota, he has gotten better as he's been in the league longer. Don't hate on Latavius Murray. He's somebody who you can get in the later rounds and has that upside for great, great potential. He is somebody, like I said, that could break into the top 24 here in the next couple weeks. 31 and 32 is where I have the Seattle backfield back-to-back Chris Carson, Rashad Penny. Now, I don't hate having them back-to-back. I think this is going to be pretty close to a 50-50 split here on the season. Carson is already banged up, had a minor off-season knee surgery. Rashad Penny got all the first-team touches and OTAs. Let's see how this one plays out. It would not surprise me to see close to a 50-50 split in this backfield. The great thing about it, this team runs so much, it could almost, you know, produce two running back twos or a running back two and a running back three. The volume will be there. No more Mike Davis in town. That's more carries going Rashad Penny's way. If Chris Carson misses any time, heck, Rashad Penny becomes borderline running back one territory. High-end RB2 if anything happens to Carson or vice versa. If Penny goes down and Carson is there, We have ourselves a great opportunity in this backfield. They can still produce with both of them. I have them back-to-back at 31 and 32. Number 33 is where I have Daryl Henderson right now. I actually have him 10 spots higher than the consensus. Now, this kind of goes back to what we said with Gurley, though. I I don't know that whole situation yet, and I'm not going to speculate and say, hey, you know, Daryl Henderson's going to go out there and get 200 touches. A lot of people are trying to, you know, put that hot take out there just so they can look like they're geniuses. Well, I'm not trying to go out there and just make a a wild guess and hope that I get right. Daryl Henderson is in line for a great opportunity if Todd Gurley isn't 100% and misses a lot of time. What happens if Todd Gurley goes out there and still plays 80% of what he did last year? A 20% of Daryl Henderson may not be worth it. He may not be anything more than a bench stash. And if that's the case, I don't hate it. Now, if you draft Todd Gurley, do you have to draft Daryl Henderson? It really depends on where you have to draft him. If you're taking him in the double-digit rounds, yes, but if in your league somebody's going to try to to snipe him from you and take him early, I don't want both members of that backfield in the first six rounds of a draft. It's just too too much of a waste of roster space, in my opinion, because we don't know 100% with Gurley. Either you avoid Gurley altogether, or you just take him, pass on Henderson in the earlier rounds, and just hope that he's good to go. Other than that, I'm not overly excited about Daryl Henderson until we can see more of that situation in Los Angeles. Number 34 is Austin Eckler. A lot of news with the whole Melvin Gordon thing, and Austin Eckler's name gets brought up a lot. But listen, this guy is not a three-down back. It's just not what he does. He excels in the passing game. The, The third down plays, he was very efficient in that last year. Once he got more of an opportunity, he actually declined. They need to keep him fresher. They need to keep his touches down because when they are, the guy is electric in the passing game, and he would be once again this year. Now, if things change with with Melvin Gordon, obviously this is another one of those guys whose rankings will adjust appropriately. Number 35, Miles Sanders. Now, I have him a few spots higher than the consensus, but this one is still a question mark. The, The talent is there, though, and that's why I have him here in the top 36. I do expect him to win out that backfield at some point. The problem is we don't know how far into the season it's going to be for him to really overtake Jordan Howard. Now, is Jordan Howard going to go out there and light the world on fire? Mm, I don't think so, but I think we're going to see a pretty solid split to start the season, and as it progresses, I think they go more and more towards Miles Sanders. The upside is there, but the opportunity may not be the first few weeks, kind of why I have him down on the list. Number 36, Adrian Peterson. Old man Adrian Peterson coming in here at 36. I have him 12 spots higher than the consensus, and a lot of that has to do with the the news coming out about Darius Geis suffered a hamstring injury. Yes, it seems like he's going to be okay for the start of the season, possibly training camp. However, it just has that question in the back of my mind that Darius Geis is if he continues to struggle with these injuries. This is the reason they brought in Adrian Peterson back for another year. He's not going to be the same type of Adrian Peterson that we saw a decade ago. I get it. 
But I've mentioned in, in videos in the past, it would not surprise me at all if Adrian Peterson is not that guy that every once in a while you can throw in there at a flex spot, and he has that potential to get you 50 yards rushing and even two touchdowns. The goal line opportunities could be there, and if guys struggles at all with health, Adrian Peterson goes right back up into that, that low-end RB2 number. I don't hate it. Chris Thompson's back in town, so he could you know, lose some work to him. But Adrian Peterson is just a name that we're not going to get rid of just yet, not until we can prove that Darius Geis is good to go 100% start of the season. All right, there you have it, the top 36 running backs here for 2019. Now, yes, it's still mid-July. Things could change. If there's something you disagree with or you think that you may do a little bit differently, put it down in the comment section. We encourage debating back and forth. We ask that everybody stays respectful because it is July. I mean, let's see what happens here in the next month before we really start to dial in these rankings. When we start to see some of these guys in preseason opportunities and and, and, and off-season camps and all that other stuff, let's see what happens then. We'll adjust the rankings accordingly, and we'll be in a great position to start the 2019 season. So if you have any questions, comments, whatever it is, throw it down in the comment section. We really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button. Like I said, any video that gets over 1,000 likes, we give away two free draft guides, so make sure you do that. Leave the comment down below. That's how we're going to pick the winners of the draft guides. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, a great week, and we'll talk to you later.